All right, we're still on 4-1 to 4-4 review. This is part four, and we are picking up on question 23. These next four are verifying your trig IDs, so we're looking back at our reciprocal quotient and Pythagorean identities. You're gonna work on one side of the equation, the most complicated side, so in this case, the left. You have two fractions being subtracted. To subtract fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this just so we have a little room to work with. We have secant x over sine x minus sine x over cosine x. To get a common denominator, I'm going to multiply this by cosine and this by sine. So that means that I have a common denominator of cosine sine. So cosine of x, sine of x, and in the numerator, I have cosine times secant minus sine times sine is sine squared of x. Okay, so, so far we have gotten a common denominator. And combine our fractions. Now we have to think about what IDs we can replace things with. Hopefully this jumps out at you. These are reciprocals, cosine and secant. You can replace cosine times secant with one because when you multiply reciprocals, you get one. That works with any two reciprocals as long as they're to the same power. Okay, so that was the reciprocal ID. Okay, and now, hopefully you're noticing that the numerator is a Pythagorean ID, that right there. That is the same as cosine squared. And it's over cosine x sine x. Okay, so that was Pythagorean. All right, and now you can reduce your fraction because you have two cosines in the numerator and one in the denominator. So my one in the denominator will cancel out one of the ones in the numerator, so that's no longer squared. So now we're just at cosine x over sine x. And this is your quotient ID. Cosine over sine is cotangent. And if you remember back to the beginning, that's what we were trying to set this equal to or prove that it was equal to cotangent. So you've done that with all of these steps. For 24, your left side is sine x cosecant x minus sine squared x. So that's more complicated. We're going to work on the left. So here we have reciprocals again. So when you multiply reciprocals, you get one. So I'm gonna replace this with one. So I have one minus sine squared x, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals one. That's our Pythagorean ID. So if I moved the sine over by subtraction, I can replace this with cosine x. And that's what I was going for. Done. Okay, this one is probably the most complicated. And you have to really look. At first, when I tried to work this, I started on the left side just because that's what I'm used to doing. And I realized that's not how I'm supposed to be doing this. I'm not going to be able to work it out that way. It's going to have to be very roundabout to get there. I want to work on the right side. This is more complicated. You have the squared, the fraction, and the subtraction. So I'm eventually trying to get to some secants. So I'm going to change sine squared x with my Pythagorean ID to 1 minus cosine squared x. Because if I get to cosines, secant's the reciprocal of cosine. Okay, so that's step one, Pythagorean ID. And I replaced sine x, sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x. And I still have one minus cosine x in the denominator. 
Now this is a part where a lot of y'all would probably have a problem. This is a difference of two squares. Okay, and I'm going to give you an example, just regular algebraic expression without trig to help you see what I'm talking about when I say the difference of two squares. If I have a number minus another number or term, and these are both perfect squares, that means I can take the square root of both of them, that's called the difference of two squares. Difference means subtraction, two squares. You can factor the difference of two squares, and they're going to be the same except for the sign. One will be plus and one will be minus. The square root of four is two and two, and the square root of x squared is x. So you have two plus x, two minus x. That's the difference of these two squares. So if you look at this, one is a perfect square, minus, that's difference, and cosine squared of x is a perfect square. So I'm going to factor it, and it'll become one minus cosine of x, and one plus cosine of x. And I still have one minus cosine of x in the denominator. Now here, you have two terms that are exactly alike, here and here, so I cancel them out. So I'm left with 1 plus cosine squared, I'm sorry, cosine of x. I am trying to get to secants, so now I'm going to replace cosine with its reciprocal 1 over secant. I'm adding fractions. I have to have a common denominator. Let me write here real quick what I did. This is reciprocal ID. And now we want to get a common denominator. Right here my denominator is secant, so over here to make this secant I have to multiply. Right now it's an understood 1. So secant of x. So now I have secant, because that's just secant when I multiply by 1, plus 1 in my numerator, and my common denominator is secant of x. And if you go back to the top, this is what you were trying to get it to equal, 1 plus secant x over secant x. Last but not least on the verifying problems, I'm going to start by distributing and that's going to give me sine of x cotangent of x plus sine of x tangent of x. And if you look, you're trying to get to secant. So again, I'm going to try and end up with a cosines so I can get the reciprocal. So I'm going to change both cotangent and tangent using quotient IDs because with the quotient IDs, that is sine over cosine and cosine over sine. I still have sine x in front of both of those. Okay, so that's the quotient ID I replaced. Okay, now here, sines will cancel. So I'm left with cosine of x plus sine times sine is sine squared over cosine of x. Now I need to get a common denominator so I can add these to get my common denominator. Right now this is a 1. I'm going to multiply by cosine. Oops, a little too far. When I do that, I get cosine squared plus sine squared, and that common denominator is cosine. Hopefully, this sticks out at you a little. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So you have 1 over cosine of x. 
at the Pythagorean ID. That's how I got there. Last but not least, 1 over cosine, that's your reciprocal ID, that is secant. And that's what I was trying to prove.